Good afternoon. This is Chris McKee here in the KRQE News 13 Digital Studio, and you are getting a live look at what it looks like out in Albuquerque right now. My goodness, that is a dust cloud unlike a lot of us have seen in a while here. We know that April is a windy month, but man, this is certainly a, uh, a good picture of what is going on here today. And we appreciate you joining us here again live on KRQE.com. I'm joined by Grant Tosterud here in the digital studio. Grant, thanks for being here today to talk to us a little bit about the wind and the, the fire danger that we are seeing here today. Yeah, happy to be here, Chris. We've been talking about this all week. This has kind of been the story we've been hammering home ever since Monday, really even ever right. since last week, talking about how this really could be a significant day when it comes to fire danger. And we're seeing it unfold right today before our eyes now as we're... The, you know, we're still watching some of those major fires that have been burning over the last several days, and the fire conditions really have not been beneficial at all today. In yeah. fact, as we're looking at uh, this time lapse, looking out over towards Wheeler Peak over the last several hours, you can see uh, the smoke blowing in up into the Moreno Valley. I know just recently the Angel Fire uh, Fire Department uh, put out on their Facebook page that they're calling attention to all residents of Angel Fire, Eagle Nest, and the Moreno Valley. That due to that smoke and wind conditions, there's the potential for rapid fire growth and uh, they're kind of escalating the concern there for evacuations potentially if that fire continues to spread northward. And you could see it really in the intensity of that um, of the smoke moving up into the Moreno Valley. Now, we can actually look in a little bit closer at some of those current fires burning here across New Mexico because we are really dealing with uncontrollable uh, and potentially catastrophic fire behavior across the state. This is a live look at some of the conditions right now at the Calf Canyon fire. Now, out there near Las Dispensas, that is uh, what the, what's left of the Hermit's Peak fire. That's not the fire we're too concerned about in this part of the Sangre de Cristo Mountains. It's now the Calf Canyon fire here. In this area, we're seeing winds. Whoa, we out just of the lost <laughs> power, actually. But Grant, we're still on. We're still streaming. Here. We're still uh, on. <laughs> we can, yeah, people can still All see right, us. Here. Okay. Yeah. So, so uh, for this, this one we're looking at southwesterly winds gusting or sustained at 30 miles per hour, gusting to 45 miles per hour right now. That is a huge concern, especially when relative humidity is sitting at 11 percent. And you have to think about how high of an elevation that is, too. That is some extremely dry air for how high up in the mountain you are. And looking at the forecast here, you can see that winds are going to continue to peak over 60 miles per hour for about the next couple of hours here. Even by 6 p.m., we're still looking at potentially damaging wind gusts. And even by midnight, there still isn't a whole lot of relief when it comes from the winds with gusts still over 45 miles per hour. Now, the other one is the Cook's Peak Fire, and this one has exploded yeah. in acreage here over the last 24 hours, even with yesterday. And here, we're still looking at wind gusts around 50 miles per hour. You can see these winds are blowing directly from the south to the north almost, and that's working its way up Highway 21. That's kind of in the area south of Cimarron there where the Philmont uh, Scout Ranch is too. And I know they were, Chris, correct me if I'm wrong here, but I know that they were devastated by a fire a few years ago. I yeah. think it was the same one that also devastated the Dixon Apple Orchard. That is a different one. That's a different fire. Different one. But Philmont Scout Ranch was indeed dealing with a fire that happened. I believe it was in 2018, and it was the Ute Park fire, Ute Park. if I That's remember right. correctly. Yes, yeah. that is correct. I know I did not get a chance to go out and cover that myself, but yeah, the Ute Park fire obviously was destructive for that area. I remember there were cancellations related to the Scout Ranch and what they would do every summer there, obviously welcoming in. I think it's, it's about 148,000 acre ranch established in 1938 and they get thousands of scouts that come through there every year so so yeah. and I, I you know i can't even imagine being in that part of the state right now seeing this smoke blowing in over your head especially for those up in cimarron too again the biggest concerns here we're looking at wind gusts right now at 50 miles per hour and the humidity is sitting at only seven percent in this part of the state that is some extreme fire behavior winds are still going to continue to gust to over 40 miles per hour even until around midnight tonight so still even as we head into the overnight there's little relief there's another look at downtown albuquerque you can't even see the sandia mountains right now temperatures are in the mid Incredible. mid 80s yeah. outside so it is extremely warm it is extremely dry with humidity sitting at only seven percent and we're seeing wind gusts as high as 56 miles per hour here in the metro obviously causing all that blowing dust to move here into albuquerque we're seeing gusts close to 60 up around santa fe we've seen 70 mile per hour gusts out in gallup this afternoon we've seen gusts over 65 miles per hour at the las vegas airport a large chunk of the state under a high wind warning that's that shade of orange there until midnight 
And for other areas in New Mexico where you're under that yellow, that is a wind advisory that's also in effect until midnight tonight. So the wind is going to be a continued factor all wow. the way through the overnight hours. And we're also dealing with areas of blowing dust too, like you can see on the cameras, a kind of more pale tan shade of a polygon up in northwestern New Mexico, covering, covering areas like Farmington, Chama's up there too. It looks like that might just barely include Cuba. Uh, in the Shiprock area, that is a dust storm warning as we're seeing near zero visibility with some very thick dust up across that part of the state. But for areas like Durango, San Luis Valley, so Alamosa, here in Albuquerque up to Santa Fe, the entire I-25 corridor there and into south central New Mexico, those are all blowing dust advisories. Obviously, we're seeing reduced visibility in these areas, and it is just extremely dry with these dew points in the teens right now. That is some bone dry air, especially when you're seeing temperatures in the 80s and 90s across the state. When you factor that in, we're looking at humidity values as low as about five to even four percent across parts of New Mexico. So bottom line is the entire state is under a red flag warning right now through late tonight. But the most important thing is, is that areas in Mora and San Miguel County are under that fire warning. That is the mm -hmm. highest kind of fire category warning that's issued by the National Weather Service. And they to don't highlight. give those out that often, right? No, I was just trying to look up uh, records on the last time they issued one. I couldn't find anything, so I don't have any exact uh, dates for that. But uh, this is the first time I've seen one of these issued here in recent years in New Mexico right. because these fire conditions are just spreading that, especially the Calf Canyon fire, so rapidly to the north and east. That is incredible. And, and we want you to, we're going to be live here for at least another few minutes here. If you got any questions for us, let us know. You can use those hashtags on your screen or Grant's actually is a little bit missing right now, but <laughs> hey Grant, hey Chris, we'll get it up here on the screen here momentarily. But um, I do want to walk people through, obviously you've had a lot of great maps here as well. NC Web is a great resource for folks and and we're going to put this up full screen here just to get a look again at some of the fires burning here out in new mexico so really the ones as grant mentioned that are really of concern here today are calf canyon this is the fire that is burning west of the hermit's peak fire and of course the hermit's peak fire is something you've probably heard about in the pecos wilderness and san miguel county in that area over the last several weeks however and, and crews have done a really good job of getting a hold of that. This is the uh, Hermit's Peak fire right here. But especially with today um, and the winds that are involved in this weather that we're having here today, the concern is that perhaps the Hermit's Peak fire does it gets more active here today. And then particularly the Calf Canyon fire, as we've talked about a little bit, has proven to grow tremendously here today. We did also um, want to put up on screen for any of those curious about the evacuations. There are mandatory evacuations in place for these areas right now. San Ignacio, Lone Pine Mesa, Chavez, uh, Canyoncito, Pendarias Village, and Pendarias uh, Valley East. And I am not going to sure. I'm not sure I know how to say <laughs> this one. Uh, Rosiada, mm -hmm. I believe. Rosiada and Upper yes. Rosiada. Those areas have mandatory evacuations here today. You're looking at evacuations on standby for Las Canada, Las Tusas, also Canovas Canyon, and El Porvenir and uh, Porvenir Canyon as well. Are there, as you can tell. My Spanish did not stick with me from my <laughs> high school days, so I apologize for the pronunciation butchering on there, uh, but bear with me. So, uh, Chris, really, yeah, that, tremendous fire danger in this Yeah, area. and that, that, that wind gust that knocked out power to us here at the station just yeah. a little while ago clocked in at 64 miles per hour. That is tied now for the wow. strongest wind gust we've seen so far this year here in Albuquerque. Wow, pretty incredible. And, and we let, let's get a look back at our, uh, our sky cam here today on the top of our, our roof. I mean, you can just see the Sandias blotted out. Uh, incredible dust blowing with this wind here today. Um, we were just talking about the two fires of concern, two of the fires of a special concern here today up in, in parts of northern New Mexico. So that being on the left side there, that being the um, Calf Canyon fire, and then also on the right side here, the Hermit's Peak fire. But moving up just a little bit north, into Mora and Colfax County, right there essentially between the border of those two counties is the Cook's Peak Fire. This one has been mostly out in rural areas, right? On private land has been burning out uh, also a significant size for this fire here. Um, if I can pull up my notes a little bit, I can give you the exact acreage here. Cook's Peak is burning more than 21,000 acres. Structures are threatened, 
but it has been mostly in an area that's relatively unpopulated out there and you know a lot of farming ranch land so to speak out in that area however there are communities that it is creeping closer to especially grant with these winds blowing here I was reading something, and I wanted to just sort of ask you, you know, mm-hmm. is it too much of a generalization if we're saying, you know, if a fire is burning today, it's going to be blowing north-northeast? Is that's, that... that's correct, yeah. The winds are blowing pretty much out of the south-southwest, which means that we're getting the fire activity blowing to the north-northeast. Okay. And we encourage folks, again, uh, if, if, we have, uh, if we can help answer any questions here today while we're online here briefly let us know. It looks like we do have one from Lisa here. She is asking about what about the fire out now in Corrales and Rio Rancho? We are just starting to learn a little bit more about this, so I'm afraid we can't tell you a whole lot more information than what you are hearing right now is that there appeared to be a structure fire out in that area. But again, we know that crews are responding to that. It is again a, uh, a just sort of a, a new breaking kind of situation here to find out exactly what's happening here. Grant, um, I know you've been asked this question, when do things calm down? And it sounds like (laughs) Saturday is going to be also windy as well, right? Yeah, so we'll get a little bit of relief overnight. The winds are going to die down a little bit into early Saturday morning. It'll still be breezy and up into the northern mountains. Unfortunately, we're still going to be windy overnight and into early tomorrow morning. Saturday afternoon is getting a little bit breezy again, windy up into the northern mountains. The good news is not nearly as strong as the winds we're seeing today, and they'll be more of a westerly direction as opposed to out of the southwest like we're seeing this afternoon. Sunday, though, is when we're finally going to start to get a little bit of relief, and early next week is especially about the first half of next week is when we should finally actually be talking about some calm winds again, even in the afternoon. So we still have a couple more days of this fire danger. Area is still under the gun tomorrow afternoon, especially on the eastern New Mexico. Uh, so we still need to keep a high vigilance as we hit through the next 24 to 36 and 48 hours wow. all across the state. Yeah, and, and I'm just noticing what the National Weather Service was putting out here out of Albuquerque here today. I know there were a lot of information, a lot of tweets. You've been sharing a lot of that information yourself and some of the information we gathered here at News 13. But, man, uh, just to emphasize the danger that, that is out there right now, um, can you recall a time in any time recently, Grant, where you're seeing this much type of warning going out there? No, this? this is this is a pretty incredible circumstance here across the state because we're not we're we're used to strong winds here in New Mexico. So this is a, still a very windy day by any standards, especially when we're seeing 70, close to 80 mile per hour wind gusts. But the most concerning thing and the most prolific aspect of this is A, just how dry the air is outside, B, just how hot it is outside too. We're seeing temperatures in the 80s and 90s across New Mexico. Right. And then another big factor with this as well is what we're watching um, is just how dry the ground is and how dry some of the forests are too. I was looking at a, a climate mapper tool that measures um, the fuels, so it, that, that kind of describes like some of the, the growth on the ground and the trees and just how dry they are. Right. A lot of that is in the greater than 99th percentile in terms of being dry. So that's why we're seeing this extreme fire danger. Wow, look at that view. Yeah. That is all of that dust just blowing into the Sandias right now. Yeah. And I mean, just that dramatic change there <laughs> between that blue sky that yeah. hasn't been hit with all that wind there and all of that dust and dirt. Um, I did want to, you know, we were talking about just how much of a wind event this is. And we are getting some new videos, uh, basically pictures, images from folks uh, who are traveling. Our own Chad Brummett has been out in uh, western New Mexico here today. He is near Gallup, just right basically close to the state line. And he he provided this video here, and I want to put it up here full screen for us. Uh, This is out of Gallup. some of, and I'll play this video for you. This is a Love's Travel Center where it looks like a sign was ripped off of the, um, off of, presumably off of the pole up there. It's hard because we're just getting kind of a first look at some of this video, but obviously a huge piece of metal there right in the middle of the road. Chad had sent this over and he had said, this is from the Love's Travel Station in Gallup, exit 16. Their sign was toppled due to high winds out here. So when you're talking about a wind event that's gonna take off roadside signs that <laughs> yeah. are seen for, you know, hundreds of feet, you know, yep. uh, it's just, yeah, it yeah. says it all. It's but, pretty incredible. Yeah, and like I told you, we're, 
the Gallup Airport has been clocking in wind gusts around 70 miles per hour this afternoon. So that, uh, that explains the kind of damage we're seeing with wind gusts like that. Wow. Grant, um, I know you do have to get over back onto the Weather Center yes. set here momentarily. So we want to thank you for being here. If you got questions for Grant, you can obviously tweet at him mm -hmm. at Grant Tosterud WX. Uh, hopefully, as well, you'll be get some uh, relief by, by the end of the day. Maybe these winds calm down and we can make it through this really dangerous stretch for fire season. But Grant, we appreciate you being here. Thanks for, thanks for doing this here. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. I'm going to stay online here for just another few minutes while Grant uh, logs off here. But uh, just to give you kind of some more of those looks outside, these are the images that were coming in from our, our sky cameras here in Albuquerque. Um, we are learning some new information now about that fire. We did have a, a person contact us a little bit earlier on Twitter asking, what's going on with the fire out there in the Corrales Rio Rancho area. We did just post an update online on caraqe.com. Not too much more about this, but basically it's a house fire that has closed down Highway 528 at this point at Corrales Road. Um, we do know that at least a house in a subdivision southeast of that intersection has been affected by this fire. So people are being asked to avoid the area. We do have a crew going up there right now. Again, these live pictures are from Albuquerque. This is near the Big Eye. You can just see how fast that dust, or excuse me, how hard that wind is blowing, kicking up all of that dust there into the sky. Here's another look from the top of our Karakui building looking east over the downtown skyline. And boy, yeah, it is uh, dust blotting out the area. So pretty dramatic, pretty incredible pictures. Um, the thing to recap here is just the danger that we are seeing from the wildfires that are continuing to burn in the area. I want to put up once again our, uh, our picture from incyweb.com. They essentially are uh, plotting out the size and acreage of these fires, and you can learn a little bit more about each one of them. This is in San Miguel County. These two fires on the right, that red blotch you see there, that is the Hermit's Peak Fire, which has been burning for weeks. And the Hermit's Peak Fire started April 6th in the afternoon, 12 miles northwest of Las Vegas, it is now 91% contained, about 7,500 acres. However, there are, um, you know, definitely rural neighborhoods in the area that are nearby. And with the wind today, we're very concerned that perhaps this fire maybe breaks loose of containment lines or gets bigger. None of those, just to be clear, none of those reports have come true yet. But we are warning people that that's something to watch out for. Our own Natalie Wattis is up there in the area of the Hermit's Peak Fire and also the, the um, nearby, the neighboring Calf Canyon Fire, which is just burning to its west. This Calf Canyon Fire, though, is about 3,000 acres in size. It has not been anywhere near contained yet. I believe there is zero containment on this fire right now. That's about four and a half miles west of the Hermit's Peak Fire. And again, these fires are blowing kind of a north northeast direction. Natalie Wattis talked to people in that area here today, just getting a look a little bit of the story she's going to share on KRQE News 13 at 4. And basically, the she's, she's talking to a lot of people here today who have been evacuated as a result of this fire. Um, people basically who, who've had about 24 hours to kind of figure it out, get up and go, pack everything because they're not totally sure of what is to come next. There's an evacuation center in Las Vegas, so a lot of people are being told to head to that area if you are being forced to evacuate because of this Canyon Creek fire, the, uh, or excuse me, Calf Canyon fire, my apologies. The evacuations there are on your screen. They remain in those areas, San Ignacio, Lone Pine, Mesa, Chavez, Canyoncito, Pendarias uh, Village, and also Ro Rosiata and Upper Rosiata areas there. The areas that are being told to stand by, potentially evacuate here on your screen now, Las Canada, Las Tuzas, Can Canovas Canyon, and El Porvenir, and Porvenir Canyon. So those areas being told to be ready to stand by for potential evacuations. But again, evacuations have already started here in this area due to the Calf Canyon fire, which again, now you can see the size of on your screen burning west of Hermit's Peak. 
There is another fire of concern here today that we are keeping a close eye on, and that being a little bit further north, bordering basically Mora and Colfax counties. Uh, this fire is the Cook's Peak Fire. As of about 17 minutes ago, 21,000 acres in size. Most of this has been out in very rural areas of the Cook's Peak Fire, but I think there is a lot of concern again with this fire blowing north and northeast. That fire, the Cook's Peak Fire, started April 17th, so just about five days ago. It is considered 0% contained at this point and is burning on private land, but we do know that there is a lot of concern about continued growth of this fire here this afternoon. Uh, again, taking a look here at the Cook's Peak fire. What we do have, uh, some of the latest updates that happened related to this Cook's Peak fire in northeast New Mexico. We, were, we are understanding that there are some new evacuations in place from the Colfax County Sheriff's Office for that Cook's Peak fire. They say due to the potential growth, they are in set evacuation status for the Philmont Scout Ranch and Cimarron. Set is basically yellow light, get ready to go. The go status is for the following communities. There's Rayado, Sweetwater, Sunnyside, and Miami. Those communities out there in Colfax County are now being told to evacuate because of this Cook's Peak fire, which again, burning all on private land at this point, but it is moving fast, being fueled by these winds here today, which we can definitely see here in Albuquerque where our sky cameras are coming from. We are getting, uh, again, some more information here this afternoon about this fire that is also burning in the area of um, Corrales Rio Rancho. I know that, that some people have been listening here today, trying to find out a little bit more of it keeping up with some of the emails that uh, have come into this. We do have our own Zach White headed out there with our photographer, Rob Zaleski. Uh, they are heading out to that area uh, near basically the south end, as we're told, of Rio Vista Drive northeast. It sounds like that is where Rio Rancho Fire, which is responding to this fire here right now, it sounds like that is where they are telling media to meet up. We do have some video from this fire and I do want to share it but also you know be warned the the visuals here are not really all too clear and crisp but we'll put them on the screen here um, in just a second but again this is a from what we heard a house fire in the area of Rio Rancho Corrales that has burned at least one home at this point but again with the winds whipping the way that they are uh, is obvious for a, a concern, especially when you when you consider that you know the neighborhoods that have been built out there usually are pretty close together. And in that area, we know Corrales, uh, a lot of trees in that area. It's a beautiful area. A lot of people are there because of the canopy that's been built in that area. So you can see this is some of the initial video that we have seen from this fire out in the Corrales Rio Rancho area. Uh, again, this is some blurry f images that you're seeing here. Frame rate's obviously not too great on this imagery, but um, trying to learn a little bit more about what is happening in that area. We do know that crews are on the way responding, and um, we do have a crew there for KRQE News 13 headed in that direction right now. We do appreciate you joining us here online. Uh, we are going to try to do the research, get this, to get these stories covered, and uh, bring you more when we have it here on KRQE.com. For now, we hope you be safe out there. Uh, download our KRQE News app. We're sending alerts about these fires and also live streaming different things when they are available just to uh, keep you as informed as possible. So we thank you for joining us here online. Hope you have a good, safe rest of your day.